one of the reasons that Dewey Beach is so vulnerable to flooding and to erosion and sea level rise is that it's one of the most low-lying areas in Sussex County and it's also a very thin barrier strip between the ocean and Rehoboth Bay. Streets like this flood a lot. Um, typically we see flood water going halfway up this street during just regular high tides and storms. So uh, the work that the Center for the Inland Bays is doing is trying to address these problems, not only on Reed Avenue, but on other streets in the town. We've had a real problem over many, many years in Dewey Beach with the, with the streets flooding uh, from high tide and with rain. Stormwater drains have a problem. They all go directly into the bay, and when the bay is high, they don't drain very well. And, and this is a test project. It really has worked quite well. We've spent a lot of time and effort and energy with the Center for Inland Bays and, and the state and the federal government to try different aspects of this and this work. You know, Living Shoreline has worked for us. Living Shorelines use natural materials like oyster shell, core fiber logs, vegetation to stabilize the shore, shoreline and actually work to absorb and diffuse wave and wind energies as opposed to reflecting them, which is what traditional hardened approaches do, things like bulkheads and rock revetments. So this particular project is a combination and integration of green shoreline and stormwater work. So it includes a living shoreline and it also includes some um, stormwater retrofits. So the project starts here with a sand dune, which you can't see right now because as it was supposed to, the vegetation has grown up and it's now hiding it. This dune is unique because it, underneath the sand, it has a new kind of spinal structure to stabilize it. Um, as far as I know, this is one of the first times that these structures have been used in living shorelines. They're called HESCO flood barriers. They're used a lot by the military to build structures in the desert very quickly or to um, deal with flood problems um, due to hurricanes and things like that. They're basically uh, wire mesh boxes that are open on the top. They're lined with a very heavy duty fabric and then filled with sand. So even if we get a big storm that washes most of the sand away, the spine of that dune will stay there and um, still provide the flood protection. So we walk down here. This is a path that goes from the parking area down to the edge of the bay. The town residents really wanted to maintain access to the bay. This is a public park, Monaco Park. People like to come here, sit and watch the sunset, and people bring kayaks and launch them here uh, at Monaco Park. So we stabilized this whole area and made a kayak launch at the end of the living shoreline and people are using this area a lot. Uh, it's a, a really an asset for the town. So if we walk down here, we can start to see some of the marsh grasses growing. Originally, when we started this project, there was a lot of big rock out here with kind of an opening, a, a U-shaped bowl here. And we delineated different um, zones that mimic natural tidal marshes. So you can see down by the edge near the bay, a low marsh area that has Spartina alternate flora in it. And then behind these oyster shell bags are plants that are typical of high marsh zones, the Spartina patens. And then we get up into the dune area and we have um, dune grasses here. So we have the restored marsh on both sides here. We restored almost 1,800 square feet of tidal marsh. And let's walk down uh, this way and you can see a little bit more of the project. This area here is the stormwater component of this integrated project. One of the big problems that the town has at all of the outfalls that uh, flow into Rehoboth Bay here is that the, um, the, as the tides rise, the, storm, uh, the, the bay water starts to push up into the pipes. We call that surcharge. Because a lot of runoff comes down the streets every time it rains hard, and then we get rising waters from the bay during high tide, we had water coming up the pipes and then runoff coming down the street and that results in a lot of flooding here at the end of these um, bayside streets. So what we're doing at these outfalls is um, installing something called a tide gate. It's basically a one-way check valve. During high water periods, those valves close and prevent the water from the bay 
flowing up those pipes. Another uh, component of this living shoreline and many of the living shorelines that we do here in the Bay is the incorporation of oyster shell. Oyster shell bags and reefs are often used in living shorelines as stabilization structures, but they at the same time provide a lot of um, heterogeneous complex habitat that oysters, baby oysters can settle on, other shellfish, fish and shrimp and crabs and other types of invertebrates use those shell bags and shell reefs as habitat. So regardless of whether oysters settle on the, on the shells, we still get a lot of great um, uh, benefit to plants and animals in the bays. Part of the living shoreline that we've used the recycled oyster shell in is an offshore oyster reef that you can see where these poles are, are out here. It's hard to see uh, from the shore, but if you were to look at it from above, you would see that it's made in the shape of sort of a braided chain. It's kind of a unique shape. The intention of the oyster reef is twofold. One, it helps break the energy of the waves as the, as the water move and wind moves toward the shoreline. It, it helps dampen the height of the waves that uh, impinge upon the shore here, so it helps prevent erosion. The other big um, advantage of this oyster reef is that it's created a lot of great habitat out here. And uh, here in Dewey Beach, there's not a lot of habitat left along the shoreline. All of the shell was collected by the Center for the Inland Bays from area restaurants. So it's all recycled shell, collect the shell through a program called Don't Chuck Your Shucks that we've had in place for several years. We collect over 4,000 bushels of oyster shells every year from the uh, restaurants in our watershed. And then we use them in restoration projects like this. So um, this has actually um, provided a lot of additional habitat here at the end of an urban area like um, Dewey Beach. It really has made a major difference in the town. It really has made a major difference for the people who live on this particular street. If it hadn't been for the Center for Inland Bays, we've been in deep trouble. You know, they, they really know how to, how to work with and within the system to, to show us what's available and tell us what we need to do to get help from the other agencies. So they've been our major partner in this. Um, one of the things that's important to point out is that this is just one project of over 40 that are contained in the town's stormwater master plan that the Center for the Inland Bays helped develop. And uh, Reed Avenue has 30 acres of runoff draining to this one point. Um, there, are, there are a lot more projects to do in this area. We've already completed one bioretention facility up at the other end of this street but our stormwater master plan has several others for this drainage area plan, plus a lot of pavement removal, installation of pervious concrete, and um, removal of concrete from the median. All of that will eventually help to not only um, reduce the amount of runoff that's coming down the street and um, help the flooding that way, but also to um, make some resiliency against sea level rise in the future. We're standing at the end of Dagsworthy Street here in Dewey Beach, which is just two streets over from Reed Avenue, which is where we were previously. And uh, Dagsworthy Street is a really great example of what's happening to the shoreline here in Dewey Beach and throughout much of the inland bays. But here at Dagsworthy, you can see the impacts of um, sea level rise because the tides get higher and higher here over the years and also the storm surges that come in and erode the shoreline. So Dagsworthy Street right now just drops off into Rehoboth Bay and you can see a lot of sand accumulated here at the end of the street. This is typically, typically left when we have high tides and the, much of the street is flooded. This is Sunset Park, which is a public park in Dewey Beach. But much of the beach here at Sunset Park has eroded away over the years. You can see there remains an old pier and bulkhead there, and um, some of the vegetation in the park is now disappearing and it's been taken over by invasive plants. So the vision of the Center for the Inland Bays and of the town is to use living shoreline tactics to restore this park, to restore the tidal wetlands that are associated with the park, and build the beach back up, put a, a stabilized small boat launch here so people can bring their small sailboats and kayaks and put them into the bay and this will be a great place for people to come and enjoy 
our inland bays. So eventually this is going to be a great public asset, something that uh, all of us can enjoy for a long time. But one of the keys to making projects like we're doing here in Dewey Beach work is the partnerships that we develop. A key role of the Center for the Inland Bays is bringing people together, bringing funding sources, bringing energy, bringing visions together to design projects, to have bigger visions about what we want to have happen to improve the health of the bays, and then finding the resources and putting the minds together to make those projects happen. And that definitely happened here in Dewey Beach. The Reed Avenue project and this project could not be done without partnership from DelDOT, the Department of Transportation, which has been putting a lot of money and um, staff time into helping us figure out how to make the projects here on the shoreline work in an integral way with the roadways. And DelDOT has a big, um, a big stake in this too because their roadways are also in danger from flooding and erosion. And then the town of Dewey Beach itself has put a lot of resources and time and energy into the projects. So working together, we're gonna to make this shoreline uh, resilient and sustainable for years to come.